The loss of a loved one is the hardest thing any of us will ever have to go through. Please know that you and your family have my deepest sympathy during this very difficult time. Everyone on the medical team has done everything possible to save the life of your loved one. I know this because all of us in the medical profession are sworn to save lives above all else. Unfortunately, there is nothing that can be done in the case of brain death, which can be a very difficult concept to understand. I'd like to begin by explaining the difference between a coma and brain death, as both can appear to be the same, yet they are completely different conditions. When a patient is in a coma, they may or may not need the assistance of a ventilator, and their brain is able to receive oxygen because normal blood flow isn't compromised. Their brain is still able to govern vital body functions such as breathing. Often, depending on the patient and their medical condition, they may recover from the coma and regain consciousness. In the case of brain death, however, the patient has suffered severe and irreversible brain damage. This leads to complete blockage of oxygenated blood to the brain. When a patient suffers from brain death, there is no recovery, and there have never been any instances of a patient coming back after brain death. Here we see a healthy brain and brain stem, and how oxygenated blood is able to flow to all parts of the brain, which is encased within the skull that is made of bone. All body functions, like breathing and temperature regulation, are working normally. Now, I'd like to describe the three most typical brain injuries that can lead to brain death. In the first example, trauma to the brain can be caused by a severe head injury, such as a blow to the head, a car accident, or a gunshot wound. A brain can also suffer from an internal injury, like a stroke or aneurysm, when a blood vessel ruptures inside the brain. Another cause of brain death is from anoxia or ischemia. This is when a patient has had a heart attack a drug overdose, or it's drowned, and is able to be revived artificially, but not before a lack of blood flow and oxygen to the brain has caused brain death. In all cases, the brain responds to the injury like other parts of our body, by swelling, as can be seen here. Because the brain is enclosed in a hard skull, this means that there is no room inside to relieve the pressure. As the pressure rises, the brain itself begins to press down on the brain stem and the main arteries. As the brain stem is pushed lower into the only opening in the skull above the spinal column, all blood flow to the brain will be cut off. Without oxygen, the brain cells begin to die immediately, and all body functions regulated by the brain will stop. This is what makes it different from a coma. The brain has died and can no longer govern vital body functions. Sometimes a patient may appear to move on their own, but this is due to spontaneous and involuntary reflex movements caused by activity in the patient's nervous system, which is not governed by the brain. A patient may appear to be alive because their heart is beating and their body is warm, but this is only because the ventilator continues to provide oxygen to the lungs and the heart continues to pump blood because it does not need to be controlled by the brain. Without the ventilator, the heart can no longer receive oxygen-rich blood, and the heart and all other organs will fail soon after the ventilator is disconnected. To determine brain death, physicians have performed several tests to verify if there is any brain activity. Attempts to trigger reflexive reactions, such as shining a bright light into their eyes, trying to induce coughing and gagging, and observing reactions to cold water have yielded negative results. Finally, the apnea test, also known as a breathing test, which is when the ventilator is disconnected to determine if the brain is able to detect carbon dioxide within the lungs, subsequently triggering a breath response, shows that a patient was unable to breathe on their own. Brain death is irreversible. There is nothing medical science can do once blood circulation is cut off from the brain. This is why it is a medically and ethically accepted diagnosis of death. I know you are facing difficult decisions ahead. 
but I hope that this information has begun to answer any questions you might have had about brain death.